Let's welcome the current number one Moira on the Asian server, DPS Moira Not Healing. He's a top ranked Moira who specializes in solo play and assassinations, not the teamfight play style of Moira we're used to seeing in tournaments. Let's watch the gameplay and analyze how he plays. One thing to note is that push maps are home turf for Moira players. DPS Moira never sticks to the main team and flanks around to the side. He wants to engage when both teams are already in the middle of the fight, when they don't have the luxury to pay attention to us. In the first fight, the allies did so well without us and we honestly just got carried. He goes in front to get some ult charge while having faith in his fade ability. And this is the first pattern for DPS Moiras. He surprisingly does heal his teammates, at least when they come close to us, but otherwise he mostly focuses on dealing damage and taking aggro onto himself. At the current spot on the stairs, DPS Moira trickles a bit of damage, then uses Fate to escape under the bridge, using the same pattern we described before. I wonder how our ally Ana feels about this whole situation. While the opponents are pushing the bot, DPS Moira is preparing to flank around alone from the side. He plays kind of like a tracer who flanks around alone to get picks on the enemy backline. This Ana is probably crying right now. One thing's for sure, the Anas on both teams aren't having much fun. When the DPS Moira doesn't have enough health, he goes into an enclosed room to recuperate by infinitely bouncing the heal orb. If the opponent tries to dive you, they're only going to waste their time because of the self-healing from right-click, biotic orb, and the health pack. It's finally time for Coalescence. Like we saw in the beginning, he's dealing damage on the stairs while moving back and forth from cover. And when the cooldown on Fade gets to around 2-3 to three seconds, he goes back up the stairs and repeats. The enemy Doomfist has to rush straight to point in order to stall the bot before the checkpoint. And naturally, only the backline is left with our Moira. As the Ana nates, we fade super jump into the back and pop coalescence on the enemy supports. This forces the enemy supports to focus on only healing each other, making it extremely difficult for the tanks and DPS to receive adequate support. Unfortunately for the enemy team, the respawning Cassidy gets shut down at the entrance of the spawn. From the Cassidy's perspective, ooh, that's unfortunate. The ally Doomfist is getting ganged up on and DPS Moira is too busy sucking on the supports. The funniest part is that doing this even worked. We completely evade the dive with Fade Super Jump, completely escaping onto the high ground. We've been in the backline for so long that the enemies have no choice but to focus us down. The enemy Genji climbs up to push us out with the Kiriko coming to assist, but because a 2v1 is a bit too risky as the Ana responds, DPS Moira escapes into the back alley, isolating the enemy Genji who chooses to chase. He rebounds the Biotic Orb for sustain, managing to win out the fight completely. As much as everyone hates this, Moira is pretty good at dueling. Assuming the enemy isn't a tank. From the Genji's perspective, the Moira's biotic orb usage is an absolute masterpiece. I don't think I've ever seen anyone use that tiny wall for bouncing orb before in any game. But DPS Moira isn't done just yet, and he goes back in to duke it out with the enemy Cassidy, and completely outplays him by baiting with Fate for the finisher. From the Cassidy's point of view, he's just like, where'd he go? The third person view is even better. Moira players need to master using Biotic Orb rebounds on every area of the map, which will dramatically increase the value you get out of the orb. After picking off the Cassidy, DPS Moira continues to stay in the enemy backline. The choice to enter an enclosed room is not that great of an idea against the DPS Moira. It only allows the Biotic Orb to get easy value, which puts yourself at risk against enemies who follow up on the damage. Finally, for the second time, he's pressing left click to heal, which for some reason feels super awkward. We're now pushing the cart past the checkpoint with an ult in our pockets. With the enemy team fully respawned, it's probably not worth the risk to flank around close to the majority of the enemy team, where you don't have the opportunity to isolate targets. So instead, DPS Moira finally starts playing like a normal support. He spends some time grouped with the team while waiting for the enemies to partially split up. Now with the chance to clear a bridge and pressure the enemy Widowmaker from range, he ults down the linear path. One detail to note is that he gets extra value by throwing an orb before casting Coalescence. 
Watching this guy makes me realize Moira's range is surprisingly long, and it feels like everything standard I knew about Overwatch is getting thrown out the window. We'll touch up a bit about how to best utilize Coalescence after the gameplay, but for now, let's watch DPS Moira being surprisingly attentive to healing despite his name. Because we're in the front of the enemy spawn, it wouldn't be a great idea to jump into the enemy backline like before. Even with Fade, you'd be risking getting focused down by the entire enemy team, which would clearly be playing out of position. Why does this healing feel so awkward? I just don't understand. We spot the enemy Doomfist and Moira taking cover in the buildings, so he doesn't miss the opportunity to send a damage orb inside for the kill. It's been pretty interesting lately to watch a lot of these unconventional top 500 players. But now, let's get right into ult usage for Moira's. In general, there are two main positions we can take for using Coalescence, one of them from main and the other while flanking. Normally when you use Coalescence, you'll find yourself pushing forward in order to maximize damage onto the enemies, but in a full teamfight scenario, you'll often run into the problem of not providing potential healing for your backline. But if we use Coalescence from the enemy flank, there's no need to push up in order to chase after the enemies who are retreating against your ult, and because the enemies will attempt to avoid Coalescence, you'll inevitably throw off their aim by forcing them to move in various directions, while still having to deal with the rest of your team in the front. And as your allies push in, it also provides the opportunity to effectively heal the rest of your teammates. Though it can be riskier, flank coalescence definitely has a place to get high value, as long as the enemies aren't already looking at you, so try it out at your own discretion. And finally, to top it off, we have a few highlights from DPS Moira. Hope you enjoy, and I'll see you guys in the next one.